<laughs> Hello. Hi. So I know we picked a different time today. We're confusing everybody. Mm -hmm. So we have some things going on tonight um, that we are coming live to you over our lunch break, which is always from one to three for those of you who don't know. But I am Jamie. This is Dr. Colin Consales. And I have the pleasure of working with two of what I think are the most wonderful doctors ever because they have changed my life. And I'm so super excited that I get paid to blurt out all of my excitedness about these two to everybody. And so what happens here is I get to talk to these guys and pick their brains about things that I think um, are just different ways of thinking for somebody who comes from like Western medicine. Mm -hmm. And um, so if you guys have any questions, this is a really odd time because most people right now, if you guys are watching us live, you're probably at work or picking kids up from kindergarten or doing something. Normally we come to you at 530, so it's a little more convenient. And then we also have a class here every 530. So while I'm with one of the doctors here, the other doctor is actually out front teaching a class. Um, that explains what you guys do, how you do it, and scientifically why it works, mm -hmm. which is super cool because their techniques are so unique that a lot of the patients you guys get, I feel like they come here as like the last stop because they don't know where else to go. Yeah. Right? Like traditional doesn't always work for everybody. And so yeah. we come to you guys to try to fix what we messed up. <laughs> it happens. It it's happens. part of life. Um, so today we get to talk about seasonal threats, and I think this is really cool, well, not only just because it's, you know, appropriate for the time, because we're getting into fall, but, I mean, there's definitely a lot of questions, I think, as far as, like, um, what do our bodies go through, or, you know, why do some things happen in the fall, like seasonal depression, mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, so, like, do our bodies really physically go through a change, like a seasonal change, during fall. During fall, absolutely. Um, it's really a shift in, in how the body is metabolizing things. So what I mean by that is whenever it begins to get cold, your body is going to want to store energy and it's natural. So this time of year, we're going to be craving things that are going to pack on weight. And those things are typically, typically going to be carbohydrates and, and sugars and things like that. So um, what the body does with that is it, it stores it as what's called glycogen in the liver, and then the liver can use it at any time it wants. The reason for that is, one, fat is an insulator, so it's going to insulate your body, and two, your body, in, in order to keep it warm, it wants to regulate itself at <clears throat> a constant temperature. So in order for it to do that, one, you want to bundle up, but two, when you're exposed to cold temperatures, your body is going to rev up the... Um, metabolism and what that does it's just going to burn more energy and the more energy it burns the more heat production is produced so we want something to burn we need a fuel to burn and typically the body is going to use its stores so this time of year if you think about it it's nice because the area that you live in in, in the country is going to kind of help you out with this so right now root vegetables are available we still have um, like parsnips and some carrots and some beets. These are things that are gonna be packed full of energy and they're nice because they store easily. Like you can put them in your basement and they could they would be fine if your basement is cool. So you can actually store these things if you're planting and growing them throughout the year. Um, so we'll get to food in a, in a little bit because I wanted to say something else I think about one of the questions, but um, also your body has a self like regulation system or a, or a thermometer, like an internal thermometer, and it's something called your hypothalamus, which one is like the master controller of your hormones, and two is located, it's in your brain, and it regulates your body temperature. So that's going to adapt to the changing, um, you know, temperature outside. You have little sensors on the outside of your body, or not the outside, but all over your body called thermoreceptors. They're nerves that sense temperature. So they're going to give it feed the brain information and the brain's going to make the changes it needs to do on a deeper level okay so i didn't give you this uh i just gotta know because let's say i have more body fat on me than you do yeah so are you colder than me that i may be because i have more yeah 
So, and you've said too that you like cold weather. I do. And that, I the, do. the interesting thing is, is where you are, um, like gen genetically, where you stem from in the world, you're going to notice that colder temperatures, the people that live and have lived in colder temperatures, they're actually a little shorter and they're more stout. Hmm. And the reason for that is, is one, again, like fats and insulator, two, the shorter you are, the less surface area you have and the less, the less heat's going to be dissipated from your body. So like a good example is like with, with elephants, the one way that they use to, you know, dissipate heat is to use their ears. They want to wet their ears oh. and flap their ears. Same thing with deer, deer that are in hotter climates, mule deer, they're called mule deer because they have really big ears and it helps to, you know, dissipate heat from the body. So if you have longer limbs, like I have really long limbs and you're thinner, I would be more suited for like a hot, hotter weather or warmer, wa warmer weather um, than someone that's shorter and more stout. Which isn't me. No, but I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I am shorter and more stout than him, but I think we all are because he's tall and thin. So. so I should be in the warm climate, maybe. You should be in the warm climate, and I think I should stay in the cold climate and use this as a great excuse to eat carbohydrates. Sure, go for it. <laughs> so we're really being facetious here because carbs don't agree with me just so that you guys know this is not a good excuse to eat carbs when you're a sugar holic like true me <laughs> and when you when you do eat so you want to increase your stores of glycogen so the best would be to consume those root vegetables and not more breads and things like that and you'll find that this time of year that's what people want they want whatever is going to give them energy so they're going to want they're going to crave more sugar more bread and things like that but you want to try to stick with root vegetables it's a it's a much better source it's like comfort food yeah and we always relate <clears throat> comfort food to like now yeah staying warm and bundling up having you know whatever but yep. yeah okay so is there really something called seasonal depression there is yeah absolutely happens and um one well it's it's a lot of times i find that vitamin d helps with that so the problem is is that today like since the 80s and it's all it's old hat as far as like information goes but fat's bad so that's completely nonsense and that's been disproven a million times but fat that comes from animals living in pasture so outside or wild game things like that that are exposed to sunlight their fat has is very high in the fat soluble vitamins which is a d and k so vitamin d is found in good quality fat and traditionally what humans do is they actually save the fat and they store it, it stores really well. And like, you know, you don't have to have a fridge to store fat. Again, you could put that in your basement if you wanted to. And that's an excellent source of vitamin D because the sunlight, which you get vitamin D from, isn't as present. So it's darker, the days are shorter. So that's an additional source of vitamin D that traditionally humans would use. Now we don't, so we wanna supplement with D and whenever we go outside, we're usually bundled up so we don't get a lot of sun exposure anyways. And it's cloudy around here. So yeah, vitamin D really helps with seasonal depression along with some other things um, specifically that we can look in, into, you know, if you were to come with emotions um, during that time of year. So I did want to, you know, let everybody here know, for those of you that are, you know, watching us that have never been here before, you and Dr. Sarah are a little different. Well, you're a lot different in the fact that part of your treatments is addressing emotional um, anything, right? Absolutely. It's very important. Um, so I think that's really, I just think that's so crucial, especially now this time of year, because a lot of, a lot of stuff I feel like emotionally happens in the fall because we're inside with people mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. Um, so... I'm just going to touch then on the vitamin D. Should we just go out and buy vitamin D anywhere? Um, as long as you're getting D3, it says D3. Typically, the quality is is it's the one supplement that really, no matter where you get it, it's it's usually the same hmm. um, for the most part. So you could be you could feel pretty safe. Vitamin D3 is the activated form of D, so you want that one. It's just easier to absorb into your body. But now with D, you want proper amounts of calcium which isn't a, a big problem um, so 
because you get that from your diet. A lot of people do. People think that they're calcium deficient because they osteopen have osteopenia or osteoporosis, which is a you know, thinning of the bones you can think of or demineralization of it. It's really that they're deficient in vitamin D. One, because in the summer when they're supposed to be getting sun, they're inside all the time or they're putting sunscreen on. And two, they're not eating the fat that they need. So vitamin D should be paired with fat. Okay. Those three things, D, calcium, and fat, need to go together for proper function. And then, um, so I know a lot of people like will complain, and you hear it all the time when it's raining especially, but when it's chilly and cold out, that people with arthritis complain that their bones hurt mm -hmm. or they ache and their joints hurt. Um, is that really, does the weather really affect us that way yeah so if it's like a pressure change like a low pressure when you're getting rain that change in pressure will affect the joints because joints are pressure oriented so if there's a problem with the joint you're gonna feel it if there's already inflammation in the joint you're gonna have increased sensitivity in that area and you will pick up on pressure changes whenever that inflammation is gone you're not gonna be able to feel that and you really shouldn't but with weather ch or with temperature changes um, what was the question? Oh, the achy joints. So <clears throat> with temperature changes, every, so your cells, each one of your cells is what's called a lipid bilayer. So there are two layers of fat on, on surrounding them. And you can put different sorts of fat within that. So your, your cells can be jet created by two different sorts of fat. You have saturated or unsaturated fat. So saturated fat is a fat that if you, at room temperature, it's solid, or whenever it's in the fridge, it gets solid. And then an unsaturated would be one that's more liquid. So this time of year, you actually want to consume a little bit more unsaturated fat, if you can, and like avocado oil is an excellent one. That's the one that I would, I would go with, 100%. And fish oils, because those guys aren't solid at, at, in, the, in the fridge. Um, what happens, the reason for that is that you want to do this is because whenever it's cold outside, that's gonna create a stiffening of all the cells in your body and it's gonna stiffen up your joints, your muscles, everything like that because they're reacting to temperature changes. So if you can put more of the fat that's more liquid at colder temperatures in your body, the less stiffness and pain you'll have. So, I mean, we could find this in fat, in making what's called fat bombs, right? Fat bombs are typically coconut oil, which would be actually more of a saturated fat. But it's kind of in the middle, like you put that in the fridge, it gets harder. Mm -hmm. That's why avocado oil and fish oils this time of year would be best. And like you'll actually do a shot of avocado oil. Mm -hmm. I like to do a shot of avocado oil and put some Celtic sea salt or Himalayan pink salt in it and take it. It's good. It tastes really good. And it's really like it has really doesn't have much of a flavor. It's really light. So I once asked you, like, <laughs> if you were stuck and you could only take a few things to eat with you. Yeah. What would it be if you just had absolutely nothing available? And it was this. Yeah, it would be like oil and salt because you need salt for electrolytes. Oil, salt, and water. It's just a really high calorie. It's really good for you, and it's what your body needs to, to function. So survival food would be avocado oil, salt, and water. Awesome. <laughs> that sounds really <laughs> awesome. All right. So... Our sleep patterns are changing, especially mm -hmm. coming up here because the time's going to change, right? Yeah. So it's going to start being dark longer. Mm -hmm. Well, you know. So do our sleep patterns change with the seasons because of daylight savings? So they'll change with the they'll, they'll change with the shorter days. So your body your body's always going to regulate itself to the light. So more sun and exposure to light, which is going to be extremely important to understand because we have photoreceptors or light receptors not only in our eyes but all over our body including our forehead and skin on our face and everywhere we have photoreceptors all over our body so whenever we're whenever we're exposed to light then it's going to activate um, it's going to actually turn off our pineal gland which produces melatonin which allows us to go to sleep and relax our body. So the more light we're exposed to, the less melatonin you know, is being produced. So whenever the days are shorter and we have more um, darkness, we're gonna wanna sleep more. 
So you should listen to your body and sleep more because it's, it's, the benefits are twofold. One, you're going to get more rest and you're not going to be burning as much energy, so you're going to stay warmer longer throughout the day right? because you're saving your energy stores. And two, you're going to get the rest that you need. Um, but that leads to another issue, which is we're constantly exposed to light, you know, everywhere, especially our cell phones, our computers, our TV screens. And this is like a blue light. So blue light has been shown to completely turn off the release of melatonin from the pineal gland. So it keeps you awake. Like, so like sleeping just, with a TV on. It's like on. a stimulant. Yeah. So you're if you sleep with the TV on, you're not getting a good night's sleep at all. It's terrible. So red light is the light that's shown to have the least amount of blue light. So if you could do a red light somehow, maybe if you need a light n night light, you have to have one. I would use a red night mm -hmm. light. That would be best. But those receptors, they even did. They've done studies. And there are multiple Harvard studies, um, and one uh, was there was another college that did one where you put glasses on that block out blue light, and then they look at the physiological changes in the amount of uh, melatonin that's released in the body. With the glasses, there's actually no change, so those glasses do not work because the sensors again aren't only on your eyes; they're all over. So you need to block your whole anything that's exposed to this light. So whenever you're sleeping, if you can, get rid of all lights, including a little bit of light that's coming under the door from the hallway, everything. There should be absolutely no light whenever you're going to bed. And try not to expose yourself right before you go to bed to that because it's going to take you longer to get into a restful sleep. So I have heard that, I mean, getting off of your cell phone and um, like the TV like a half hour before bedtime mm -hmm. is... A, a, just a nice way to get your body prepared to have an, a good rest. Yeah, it's true. So um, that is pretty much all the time we have with you today. All right. We actually are going to go have some lunch. We hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any um, subjects or questions you want to ask the doctor, just shoot them over to us and we'd be happy to help. And if you want to check out our free class on Wednesday night, you can just go to our website. It's ihwcenter.com. And you can just reserve your seat right there. Thanks, guys. All Bye. Right, thanks. Have a good one.